Hey folks, Sirdar here, and in this episode of Dev with Sirdar, we'll be embarking on a multi-episode journey through the Django web framework for Python. We're going to explore in a series of videos how to set up, configure, and manage a simple web application with a database and management console, all written in modern Django as of 2023. Now, Django is one of the most popular Python web frameworks, in big part because it's got most everything you could ask for in a web framework. Now, that's also one of its potential downsides, because there's a lot. And because there's a lot, you have to do a fair amount of work to get things up and running. So if you're only looking to create a simple JSON API or a quick and dirty status page, Django is going to feel like overkill. But if you want something that will grow along with your projects as they grow, Django gives you a big base to build it on and a lot of tools to build it with. So for this first video, we're going to start with some basic foundational steps for working with Django and making a project. We're going to talk about how to set up a project and an app and the difference between those two things in Django. And we'll also explore what steps you need to take before you can start writing actual code for your Django apps. So the first step is to install Django itself. I have here a newly created Python virtual environment with nothing in it. And to set up Django in it, all I need to do is pip install Django. And once that's done, you'll have installed Django and a few other supporting projects that go with it. There's ASGIREF, SQL parse, and TZ data. Now, we're probably not going to touch these directly for a bit, but they will all eventually become useful. So don't worry too much about them. Now, to check if Django is working once everything's been installed, run Python M Django version. And if all is well, you should get the version number at the console. The next thing that we're going to do is use Django's built in tooling to create a Django project. And a project in Django is a unit of organization for things written using the framework. A project can contain one or more Django apps. And to explain the difference between a project and its apps, it's worth going to Django's own documentation for a, de for a definition. It says here, an app is a web application that does something, e.g. a blog system, a database of public records, or a small poll app. The poll app, by the way, is the demo that they give. A project is a collection of configuration and apps for a particular website. A project can contain multiple apps. An app can be in multiple projects. So a good example of this kind of thing would be a website that sells books, movies, and music. Let's call it Nile.com. All of these products and all of the users who buy them will be kept in a common project level database. But each type of project might require a completely different site, completely different presentation, completely different business logic, because you don't buy books or browse movies in the same way that you check out music. So you would have books.nile.com and then you'd have movies.nile.com and so on. And each of these could be a different app inside a common Django project. Now, it's worth noting that you don't really need to have multiple apps in a single project. It's just one of the things Django gives you as part of the way that you can do things with it. So for the sake of this demo, though, we're going to focus on a site that has one app in it. But it will give you an idea of how multiple apps work. To create the site, we're going to use the Django command line tool Django-admin. This is for handling admin tasks at the top level with Django. So we issue the command Django-admin start project and then the name of our site. I'm going to keep things simple and just call it demo site. Now when we run this, it does a number of things. First, it creates an outermost directory using that name that we chose. And then it populates that directory with two things. One is another directory with the same name, which I'll explain why in a moment, and a manage.py file. Most of the management for your project will be done through manage.py. So we're going to go into that subdirectory in our command line to get direct access to it. Now, I mentioned before how we have this subdirectory, also named demo site, in the main directory. See, this holds a default app that has been created automatically for this project and which shares the name of the project itself. And that default app holds things like the administration panel for the project. So the app that we're going to create, though, is going to go in a separate subdirectory. And we create that using, once again, manage.py. And the app that I have in mind for this is going to be called PostBoard. It's going to be a simple message board. So we'll create it with Python, manage.py, start app, PostBoard. 
Another side note, when you create new apps inside your project, choose a different name for those apps than the overall project name because we've automatically created a project inside with that name. So we don't want to get confused. Now you'll notice that we have a subdirectory named postboard and that will contain the code for our postboard app eventually. But right now it's just empty scaffolding. We've got a ways to go. <laughs> Because the last step that we're going to take in this video involves setting up the Django project's database. Now, every Django project comes with a database. Most web applications use some kind of database on the back end, so Django will throw in one for free. And by default, that database is created using SQLite, which is the database system that's built into Python, so it's highly convenient, and it's, it's quite performant for most of the th things that we would throw at it. Now, again, you can use the database if you want to, or you can leave it alone. There is no pressure. But for what we are going to be doing, we are most definitely going to want to use it. Because one of the other things that we get for free, along with the database, is something that we tend to end up having to create for most websites that have a database anyway, which is a user management system. And this includes things like user logins. We're going to need that later down the line, so we'll want to prepare our database in this project for it now. Well, one of the things that comes up often in websites that have a database is this. What if I need, as I'm working on the site, to make changes to the structure of the database? I'm not talking about adding or deleting records, but adding columns to tables or adding entirely new tables or even removing them. And I could do that by hand, but those kinds of changes are really disruptive and they're a pain to track manually. So what Django gives you is a way to automatically apply changes to your site's database structure. And each one of those change sets is called a migration. So a newly created site will have a set of migrations already set up and ready to apply. And what they do is they create, they set up the database for its first use with this, with this user record system, Python manage.py migrate. And all of this stuff that's being printed to the console is information about what's being added or changed to the project database but we don't actually have any user info. We're going to go back to manage.py and create our first user for the user system in our app. And this is the project admin user or super user. And this we do with Python manage.py create super user. And that will ask us for a username. I'm just going to use admin, an email address, and a password, which we will need to type twice. So now at last we can use that account. And in order to use that account, we have to actually start the server um, for our site in a provisional way. And with manage.py, we can use Python manage.py run server to spin up the test server that we use to interact with our site in a, uh, in a development way. So if we do that, and then we go to the server, and then go to the admin section of our site. And again, this was created for us by Django originally. This was all built in. And as you can see there, we have this nice admin panel where we can inspect and we can change user information. And it's all been pre-built for us. So now we have a Django project that is ready to start accepting actual code. We've set up the project. We've set up a default app for administration. We've created an empty app in it that we will populate with code later. And we've configured the underlying database with the user account system that we get with Django. Now, next episode, we're going to roll up our sleeves and we're going to begin working on the app itself starting with the app's data model. And that's it for now. If you like this, leave a comment below. And don't forget to follow Dev with Sodar and InfoWorld on Facebook, YouTube, and InfoWorld.com. <laughs>